I have been looking everywhere for a faster way to do eBay product photography while still getting perfect white backgrounds for my items. Well, I finally found the best and fastest way to do product photography for eBay and in this video I'm going to be sharing how. Alright, so this video is not so much about actually taking photos because I feel like that's a pretty basic concept. The area in which you can really start saving time is in the editing of the photos once you've taken them because of course it is important to get as close to a white background as you can for your eBay listings and unless you have access to a professional grade photo studio and expensive camera equipment, you're going to need to do some editing in order to get these photos looking good. So yes, this video is focused on the new method I have found of editing pictures but just to confirm the basics, here is a very quick guide on how to actually take photos for your eBay listings. Okay, taking photos for eBay can be broken down into three parts. First is your background, second is the camera you use, and third is the lighting in the room that you take your photos. Covering your background first, I like to use a material called Core Flute that you can find at any local hardware store. It's this white sheet material, it has kind of a plastic feel. The great thing about Core Flute is that you can easily clean it, so if I ever get some marks or stains from the products that I'm listing, I can wipe them away with a wet cloth without worrying about damaging the Core Flute. You can also use photography paper paper or one of those pre-made backdrops that you can buy on eBay. Those work fine, but you do have to keep in mind that it will be much harder to clean them, so be prepared to have to replace those kind of backdrops if they get seriously dirty. The most simple part of eBay product photography is the camera you use. Simply, you can use your phone. Many large sellers still do this. All of the later iPhones and 99% of the newer smartphones will have a good enough camera to take eBay photos with. You definitely don't have to go out and buy a camera to take great quality photos for eBay. I used to use my camera and G7X camera to take my eBay photos and I realized I wasn't even getting much better quality out of it and it was taking me more time to do as well as the camera not having as much battery life as my phone does. So just use your phone, especially if you're starting out. Finally, let's talk lighting. I've said this in the past, but the most important thing you can do to improve the quality of your photos is to actually take them in a well-lit room. Make sure that the ceiling light in the room that you take your photos is described as cool and bright as opposed to warm. Bulbs described as warm omit a more kind of yellow colored light and it's not really ideal for taking photos. You can invest in some box lights to create a more professional photo studio, but in my experience, especially with the editing techniques I'm about to show you, this is not necessary to get perfect white backgrounds. However, if you do sell a lot of small items, I definitely recommend investing in a ring light to get those really detailed close-up pictures. The bottom line is, however you take your eBay photos, you probably still could make them better by doing some editing, so now let's talk about that. Alright, now let's talk about editing the photos that you'll be using on your eBay listings. And this is actually an area where many sellers vary a lot and there has been a lot of contention about what software you should use to edit your photos or whether you need to use software at all to do this. So I think a good place to start is to go over what we actually want as eBay sellers out of our photos and therefore out of our photo editors. First of all, of course we want white backgrounds, that's the main point Point of editing our photos to remove any shadows and to get that perfect white background for our listings. Second, we need this to be done quickly. If we had all the time in the world, we could go into any photo editor and use the lasso tool to manually cut out the product we're trying to sell from its background and then add a perfect white background onto that. But of course we don't have time to do that for all of our listings, so there needs to be a quicker way to do it for photo editing to be worth our time at all. Third, this needs to be cost effective. Surprisingly, some photo editors charge per picture to remove backgrounds from images and therefore give them that perfect white background. This is just not cost effective for us as eBay sellers because even if we're only getting charged a few cents per photo we edit, many sellers take hundreds, even over a thousand photos per day, so that could really add up to be over $10 for us to just edit some photos and that's not really sustainable. So while I think it's reasonable to pay some kind of monthly fee to use a photo editor, paying per picture I edit is just not something I'm prepared to do. The fourth and final requirement I was trying to get out of a photo editor is what made this process of finding the best one really difficult for me And that was the ability to automatically confirm edits I didn't want to have to sit there and automatically select to confirm each time I made an edit on a photo And there's only one effective way of doing that that I found which is what I'll be showing you in this video But next what I'm going to show you is the different options that we have for a photo editor as eBay sellers And then I'm going to explain the fastest method of using some of this software to edit our eBay photos The first option it's important to mention 
mention is the idea of not editing your photos at all. Of course, this saves a lot of time and hassle for you as a seller, but eBay has told us that white backgrounds are important on our listings, both directly and indirectly. Of course, Amazon requires listings with perfect white backgrounds, but eBay themselves clearly promote these listings also. It has been shown that white backgrounds do improve the click-through rate of a listing, which will further boost the position these listings rank in in search. Now, if you sell very large, unusual, rare, or maybe highly sought after items, then I don't believe that you have to edit your photos. In these rare cases, you won't really need to advertise your item because since there's less competition for these items, you won't have to compete with other sellers for the attention of buyers. But most of you watching this probably don't sell a lot of rare, unusual, or incredibly large products. So just like me, you have to find a way to edit your photos. The first option is one I see a lot of sellers using and it's what I almost settled on and that is the photo room app. This thing has a few key positives, being that you can remove backgrounds completely from most of your eBay photos, and you also can resize images to the eBay template size, which definitely is a plus. But in my opinion, this application has a lot of issues and leaves a lot to be desired. First, the photo room app can only be used on a phone, meaning that if you take your photos on a camera, you'd have to move the photos from your camera, then likely to your PC, and then back onto your phone just to be able to use them in the photo room app. Now, even if you do take your photos using your smartphone, the problems don't end there. Once you've taken your photos, if you want to keep them in order, then you'll have to edit each photo that you've taken, even the ones that don't need to be edited. So let's say you took a picture of the tag. If you want to keep it in position in your camera roll, since the photo room app saves a new copy of each photo that you've taken, you're going to have to edit this picture of the tag also, even though you don't need to. Now, of course, when you go to remove the background from this image, it's going to remove a part of the image that you don't want it to. Then you have to manually edit the photo to revert the changes, and you'll have to do this for every single photo that you've taken. And keep in mind, if you take 500 photos and it takes you even just three seconds to confirm each one, that's almost half an hour of your time that will be taken up each day editing photos. I haven't found a workaround for this and it just seems to be a really flawed app. On a yearly plan, the cost is about $5 per month, which I think is a reasonable price. Now I know the photo room developers have worked with some other resellers who do YouTube videos. So if you do happen to watch this, I have three ways that you can make your app the undisputed number one for eBay product photography. One, you need to make the app available on PC. Many people use the PC to do their photo editing and it's really important to have that option. But I understand if that's not possible. So number two, more importantly, add an option to be able to automatically confirm edits. And three, give us some way of being able to edit only the photos we want without mixing up the order of the photos in our camera roll. If you can do those things, especially numbers two and three, then you'll have my full endorsement. But right now I cannot recommend the photo room app for most sellers. The second option is what I use to use, that is the eBay photo editor. The photo editor can be pretty good if you're editing a picture of an item that has a lot of contrast between your background. So if you have a white background, a black item is going to stand out really well and have a perfect white background. But let's say you're selling a white or light blue item, it's really not going to work very well because the eBay photo editor doesn't have a remove background tool. The way that you can use it to get a white background is to turn up the brightness and the contrast in the image, making darker items stand out. Also, image edits that you make often fail to load. Now you can lessen the impact of this by saving all of your listings as drafts and then later on editing all the photos in bulk because then the items will have had time to load up onto eBay servers and that does reduce the amount of errors that you'll get but still the eBay photo editor is terrible for editing items that are similar to the background they're on. The next option is remove.bg. This is a website and hands down it has the best background remover tool that I've found and it can actually be automated and you can do bulk uploads meaning that you can upload a bunch of images and have this software remove the background from all of them and download them all at once. So it has that automation box ticked. However, there's one massive drawback, meaning I could never recommend remove.bg and I barely even want to bring it up. That is the pricing. Remove.bg works on a model where you pay for each item that you edit using their software and the pricing is absolutely ridiculous. To remove the background of 10,000 images, which is roughly what I've gone through in some months, that would cost 1,490 US dollars. That equates to 15 cents per image. Clearly it adds up because that's an insane amount of money to spend on software like this. I don't know how anyone justifies it. Maybe if you only add a few images to edit and you could just pay for those, then I could understand it if you needed a really good job done. But in terms of a plan that would be effective for us eBay sellers, I don't know who could afford to pay for this, so I cannot recommend it. The next option is Pixlr. It has a remove background tool that can produce some impressive results. However, it fails more than half the time I try to use it, so I can only really recommend it for one-off edits. It does 
have a bulk upload functionality, but I've never been able to get that to work. I'd love to know how if it's possible, but I haven't seen any tutorials, so I use it quite sparingly. Now the final option I wanted to present to you guys was Photoshop. Photoshop has an automatic remove background tool that does a pretty solid job of getting white backgrounds for your images. No, it's not as good as remove.bgs. It's not that it ever fails, but sometimes it doesn't do a perfect job, especially on items that are similar to the color of your background. The cost for Photoshop varies between around $10 to $15 per month, depending on where you are in the world and whether you have some type of student discount or something like that. On Photoshop, I can edit around 20 images per minute, and the key feature is that it can be automated, meaning I can do other types tasks while the Photoshop editor is working. I don't have to confirm each edit and therefore I can be way more productive and I don't need to actually spend a lot of my time doing photo editing. On Photoshop, this is called a batch process and here are some of the results of me using this to edit the photos for my eBay listings. It clearly works pretty well for the most part. And now I'm gonna show you how I set up Photoshop to automatically remove the backgrounds from my eBay images. This is definitely the fastest way I found to edit product photos. So I just had to share it with you guys. All right, I'm gonna show you how to set this up on Photoshop. Full disclosure, I am not a Photoshop expert by any stretch of the imagination. Up until a few days ago when I worked out how to do this, I was using Pixlr. I've never really used Photoshop. I understand it to a very basic level, but I had to follow a few different tutorials to figure out how to do this for our product photography. So I'm sorry if there is a quicker way to do some of the things that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. All right, first, of course, you do need Photoshop and I'm on the kind of home screen here and I'm just gonna open this image. It, it doesn't matter what you open at this stage. You can open any image. Um, this is just a picture of a shirt that I have sold on eBay. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is hover over the window tab and scroll down until you can see actions, select that, and then it's gonna bring up this little menu here. So basically what we're going to do is record what we need done to each of our eBay photos. And we only need to do this once and then we can apply it to all of our photos. Okay, so in this actions menu here, the first thing you wanna do is click on the folder icon. So now we're creating a new set, which is basically like a folder that we're gonna store this new action in. And I'm just gonna call this eBay. Select okay. And now we're gonna create the action. So you wanna click this little plus symbol here Again, you can call this whatever you want and then select record. Now Photoshop is recording every click we make and it's doing this so we can then apply it to each one of our eBay photos. First thing I'm gonna do is right click on the image layer and then select layer from background, select okay. So then on the right in the properties tab here, select this quick actions drop down, and then from there select remove background. So this is going to uh, perform the automatic remove background tool. It's just loading right now. And as you can see, we've removed the background from this image. Now we're not 100% done yet. Next, we're gonna create a new layer to get the white background for underneath the image. So we're simply gonna go up to the top right and on the layer, we're gonna select new layer and layer one, that's okay. We're gonna move this layer so it's under the image because we don't want our white background covering our image. And then while we still have this new layer selected, I'm gonna go over on the left and select this rectangle tool and make sure the color is white here. So this primary color um, is white and if it's not, you can just select it there. And then I'm just gonna make sure I'm well outside of the, um, the frame. And then I'm gonna drag like that. And now I have a white layer underneath the image. Then once you've added the white background, select file and then select save as. And then make sure to save the image as whatever type of image that you've taken. Most likely this will be a JPEG. I know that the photos that my phone takes are JPEGs and you can pretty much safely assume that the photos that you have are JPEGs. But if you're unsure, you can locate one of your images and hover over it and it will tell you that as you can see here, it is a JPEG. So then what you want to do is save this edited photo with the same name in the same place as the original copy of the image. And what this is gonna do is override it. So you select save, and then it's gonna ask you to confirm, and this will basically replace the original image. Select yes, and select okay here if that comes up. So now we've completed creating our action script, so select stop. Basically what we've just done is recorded everything I just did. So Photoshop can now do that to a bunch of our eBay product photos instead of us having to do it manually. So we now have that action saved. Okay, now what I have here are some of the eBay photos that I've taken that I'm gonna apply our little action to on Photoshop. So in order to do this, what I need to do is hover over file and then scroll down until I see automate here and then select batch. 
this menu will come up and then we need to make sure that we have our action set. So we did put it under the set of eBay and then it's called action two for me. So once you've located that, you need to choose the folder that contains only the items that you want to have this edit made on. So if you have a bunch of different photos and you don't want them all to be edited like this, for example, this is a picture of a tag and I don't want any edits to be made of this one. What you do is go through all of the pictures that you have while holding control and select the ones that you do want to remove the background from and then copy them. So control C and then you want to create a new folder, call it whatever you want. And then inside this new folder, paste just the photos that you want to be edited and see, I'll do that so you can see them. And then what we're going to do is edit them and replace them from here. And then once the edit is completed, we can remove them from this new folder and put them back with the rest of our product photos. If this doesn't make sense now, don't worry, it will once I complete the edit. Okay, so folder four has the photos that we want edited. So what I'm gonna do here is select from source. I'm gonna select folder. Don't worry about all the rest of this and then select choose. And then you need to find the folder. So this folder was over in B8 and it was number four. Click select folder. Also make sure that all these are unchecked. To be totally honest, I don't know what all of them do, but I have them unchecked and it works fine for me. Then you need to choose a destination. So a place for the edited images to be saved in. So what we're gonna do is overwrite the existing copy of the images that we want to edit. So even if you wanna edit all the photos you took, it's probably a good idea to make a new copy of them just so you have a backup in case something goes wrong. So again, we're going to choose that same folder, which is in B8 and it's number four. So this is going to overwrite these images. You want to select this box that says override action, save as commands. And that means that it won't ask you how you want to save the item for each one of the photos you edit. And it will make this thing just run without you having to get involved at all. For this file naming section, just leave it as document name and extension because that will make sure it directly overwrites the image by saving it with the exact same name and file type. And then we're pretty much ready to edit all of these images in bulk. So we're going to select OK and let's see how it goes. All right, it's just going through here and it's editing each image. And keep in mind, guys, that while it does this, you can um, go about your day and really do anything you want. You don't need to get involved with this. Um, it will take up a lot of your kind of computer's uh, processing usage, um, like your CPU and your RAM. So don't expect to be able to do like a lot of kind of really intensive tasks while you're getting this done. So maybe avoid streaming while you're doing this, etc. But you could certainly upload listings while this is getting done. And as you can see, for those 10 or so images, um, they're already completed. So now we can head over to that photo where the new edited images will be saved. And as you can see, it's removed the background from all of them. So let's see how good a job it did. Okay, so for this one, um, the edges are a little bit rough, but overall, I think that is good enough, in my opinion, um, for an eBay product photo. The second one of the same image, the, edit the edges are a little bit rough again, but overall pretty solid. This one is perfect. Um, this type of image, it works really well. Now there's a little bit of shadows at the bottom, but I really don't think that matters all that much. Um, this is live guys. So I haven't, you know, intentionally selected images that this would look better at. Um, this is a really good mix. I picked some light items and some darker ones. See like this one again, little bit down the bottom, but overall, I think this is really acceptable. Um, like still, I would consider this a white, a white background. This image I chose intentionally because um, it didn't do so well. Now the way that you could avoid something like this is is maybe having some more lighting. As I said earlier in the video, I don't currently use box lights. So maybe if I did start using box lights, I would have a higher success rate, maybe close to a 100% success rate with Photoshop. But I will show you what I do in cases such as this, because obviously I can't use this image and probably, yeah, I can't use this one either. But then going back to um, even something like this, like a light brown, it, it does work fine. You know, like this is perfectly fine. This black works great. Uh, yeah, most images are gonna turn out fine. I think that's a pretty good cross section. I will just quickly show you guys some jeans that I did um, this morning. It was just this morning. It is in number one here. And you know, this is jeans. For jeans, I like to do this kind of profile shot edited and then also the back and the front. And basically, yeah, like none of the jeans I needed to re-edit. But sometimes I do get a shirt like I showed you before that does need to be re-edited because the edges of the item just aren't good enough. And this is what I do in that case. I simply head over to the Pixlar website that I have talked about in the past and I did talk about at the start of this video. And I will go back to just finding that image that did fail before. One second. All right, this is the one. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it into Pixlar and it hopefully will work the first time. But as I said, yeah, see, Pixlr failed. Um, that's why I can't justify using it more regularly. Like, see, now it's done a really great job. Like, that's a 
you know, really solid lines on this, better than the Photoshop one, but it just fails so regularly, as you can see down here, you know, this is unedited. Um, sometimes it will take two or three tries, and then what I will do is, like, for the back, I'll select download and download that and make sure to give it the same name as the um, file that it's replacing so the images stay in the right place in order. So, yeah, guys, Pixlr does fail a lot, but I do use it when Photoshop has an error with the image, and if all else fails and even Pixlr is failing, then I will either just not edit the photo because it is not the end of the world for one or two images, but the other option is, of course, going over on to Pixlr or Photoshop and just using the lasso tool and manually cutting out the background and you can actually fine tune it here um, using either a lasso tool or you can kind of like remove different parts of the image like see there that remove parts. So it is always an option but I think I've shown you the best and fastest way to do your eBay product photography. Bye. 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 Bye.